Welcome to the first lecture in the Asian Development Bank 3IE Impact Evaluation Lecture Video Series. This first introductory lecture will introduce you to basic concepts such as the counterfactual and the role of comparison groups in establishing a counterfactual to assess the impact of development programs. Let's take the example of a rural electrification program. One of the objectives of this program is to stimulate economic growth in rural areas through the development of small and medium enterprises. And the indicator we're going to use to measure the achievement of that objective is employment in small and medium enterprises. So, what has happened to employment in project areas during the life of this project? Let's take a look at this graph which shows the increase of employment during the life of the project from baseline, before the project started, to end line, at the end of the project. And we see that employment in small and medium enterprises has risen from 3,200 people at baseline to 4,800 people at end line. That's an increase of 1,600 new jobs created in project areas during the life of the project. But can this increase in employment be attributed to the project? Well, no, it can't, because we don't know what happened, would have happened in project areas in the absence of the project. Let's take now a look at this graph, which shows yet again, in the blue bars, the increase in employment that we see in project areas from 3,200 at baseline to 4,800 at end line. But the red bars show also what would have happened in those areas had the project not taken place. This is what we call the counterfactual. So we see, under the counterfactual of no project, employment prior to the project taking place was 3,200. The same has actually happened because the project's not taken place yet. But at end line, after the project, employment in SMEs would have risen to 4,200 people, even in the absence of the project. So, because employment is rising in project areas, even in the absence of the project, we cannot take the whole change in the outcome we see in project areas and attribute that to the project. To figure out how much of the increase can be attributed to the project, we need to establish a counterfactual, which tells us how much employment would have changed had the project not taken place. And this is the challenge that impact evaluation seeks to tackle. More specifically, impact evaluation attempts to answer the question, what difference does an intervention, a project or a program, make to the state of the world? We can formalise that statement by saying, what were the values of the outcome indicators with the project compared to what they would have been in the absence of the project? And we can write down that expression using this short mathematical expression here, where the Y refers to the outcome that we're looking at, such as employment in project areas. The T refers to the time at which we're measuring that outcome, so that is the end line after the project in this particular case. And then in the first term here, YT1, the 1 refers to the fact that we're measuring the outcome in project areas given that the project took place. And we're taking away from that what would have been the outcome had the project not taken place. So the Y, T0, the Y is the same outcome, measured at the same point in time, but for the same people had the project not taken place. Now here's the problem. We can see this, we can measure the outcome in project areas after the project's taken place, but we cannot measure the outcome for the same people in the same place at the same point in time as if the project had not taken place, because the project has taken place. We can't go to project areas and measure what their outcomes would have been in the absence of the project, because the project has taken place. So, to get at that second term, to know what would have happened in the absence of the project, we use a comparison group. A comparison group is a group that has, on average, the same characteristics as the project area. So, we were to measure, for example, household asset holdings, education levels of the household head, different livelihoods, activities, employment, agricultural production and so on. On average, these sets of characteristics would be the same in project areas and comparison areas. So the project and comparison areas are at baseline having on average the same characteristics. 
We then go to end line after the project's taken place and look at the difference in characteristics at that point in time. And any difference we see in outcomes after the project's taken place, we say must be attributable to the project because prior to the project, these two areas were actually on average the same. So given this framework of a project area and a comparison area and data from baseline and endline, how can we calculate the project impact? Here are some data using that framework that go back to our original example of employment resulting from rural electrification in small and medium enterprises. So in the project areas we see the same numbers as before that baseline employment is 3,200 and endline employment is 4,800. In the comparison areas employment was 3,600 prior to the project and has risen to 4,200. So there's two ways in which we can calculate the project impact. One is to look at what we call the ex post single difference, which compares the level of outcomes at the end of the project. So ex post so is calculated after the project. Single difference is just taking away the comparison area outcomes from the project area outcomes. So the ex post single difference is 4,800 minus 4,200 equals 600. If we have baseline data, we can calculate the double difference impact estimate, which is a better estimate to have if we have the data available to calculate it. The double difference impact estimate compares not the level in outcomes between projects and comparison areas, it compares their change over time. So the change over time in employment in project areas is 4,800 minus 3,200 equals 1,600. And the change over time in comparison areas is 4,200 minus 3,600, that's 600. So the double difference impact estimate is 1,600 minus 600 equals 1,000. That double difference estimate is more robust because the fact is that employment levels and treatment and in projects and comparison areas were not identical when the project started. They're close, but they're not exactly the same. And so the double difference estimate irons out these differences. So we can see it's important to have baseline data. It's important to have a comparison group. So where does the comparison group come from? There are two main methods that can be classified as experimental on the one hand and non-experimental on the other. Experimental measures comprise randomized controlled trials where we random, randomly assign the program or project to particular districts or firms or households and so on, or natural experiments where some law or act of nature plays a role as if there were random assignment of the program. On the other hand, there are quasi-experimental methods which can be divided into statistical matching, which creates comparison groups using statistical procedures, or other statistically based approaches such as instrumental variables. And we'll be learning more about each of these methods in subsequent lectures. So in summary, simply looking at what happens in project areas cannot tell us that those changes we see are a result of the project. We need to use impact evaluation to tell us what would have happened in the absence of the project, and we usually use that, do that using a comparison group. Once we have a comparison group, we can compare outcomes in project areas, the outcomes in the comparison areas, to measure the difference the program made. And that's why we're doing impact evaluation, that's why we're doing this course, because we want to know what difference development programs make, so we can actually design better programs in the future and spend our money on programs that are more effective. So thank you for listening to this first lecture in the series, and in order to be able to assess yourself, on how well you've mastered the material I've been discussing in the last few minutes, please now go on and take the quiz associated with this lecture. Thank you.